Are your children too tall for squats? Tonight, news at 11. I am Dr. Mike Isertal for Renaissance Periodization, and can you really be too tall for squats? People sure say it all the time. Very common claim. You know, things like squatting's easy for short, or I don't get much out of squats because that's because I'm tall. Is there truth in this? Turns out there's both truth and falsehood, as there are in many things in life. Namaste. Isn't it great how spiritual I am? I hope you're spiritual too. The falsehood directly, just because you're tall, it doesn't make squatting any more problematic, any more difficult, biomechanically, any more anything. It just means you have to move a bigger absolute distance. So a short person moves a foot and a half, tall person moves three feet when they squat at the hips. That means that per the same muscle strength, you have to load much less weight on the bar. And that means it upsets you that you're not very strong, uh, seemingly, because the external load is very low. And then you start to make excuses like, yeah, it's because I'm so tall. But in reality, you're too weak. You just need to keep squatting. And maybe this wouldn't all be true unless there was a few really good examples of unbelievable squatters, and the best of which is Hofdor Julius Bjornsson, former World Strongest Man, six foot nine. You're probably not that tall if you're watching this video. Now, I know someone's going to comment, I'm seven foot four. Enjoy the NBA while it lasts. Hofdor Julius Bjornsson squatted 980 pounds in regulated competition. You're not too tall to squat. You're too weak. Maybe. But hold on. What about the grains of truth? People with shorter torsos in relation to how long their femurs are are not so well built for squatting. They have to lean over forward more to keep their center of gravity over their feet, because if it's any one direction, it, you fall over, and they have to use their posterior chains a lot. Posterior chains become a big limiting factor, and thus they're limited in how effective they can be at squatting. And a lot of times, not only can they not squat as much, but also because their posterior chain is limiting, their quads aren't receiving a ton of the stimulus. And they're receiving plenty, but posterior chain might be at one rep in reserve when you rack the weight. Your quads might be at six reps in reserve. So it's really low quality training for them. And here's the kicker. On average, in human populations, taller people tend to, not always, tend to have smaller torso to femur ratios, which means if you get a tall person and a short person, compare them together. If you compare their sitting height, it's how tall people are when they're sitting, shorter people look a lot better all of a sudden. Right? And most short people, when they sit up, they don't look incredibly tiny in chairs. They look sort of normal. And you can probably tell this from like work meetings and um, classes you've been to through your whole life. Like you can't really tell who's tall and who's short when they're sitting down nearly as well because even the tall people kind of look normal. And then when the tall people stand up, you're like, holy shit, how much leg did you have under that chair? Their femurs and their tibia are so long in relation to their torso, that when they stand up, they look way taller. So on average, taller people do have trouble with squats. It's not because they're tall. It's because they have not so great ratios. Their torsos are too short for how long their legs are. You can have short people like this. It happens all the time. It's not as common, but it's totally common in a statistical sense that it occurs uh, all the time. And then you're just not built for squatting no matter what height you are. But it's not because you're tall directly that this happens. It's just torso femur type situation. Interestingly enough, Hofstra Julius Bronson has an incredibly tall torso and his torso to femur uh, relationship is uh, what it would be for an average person. So he has no problem squatting. Uh, he did have a ton of problems squatting back in the day when he was a young world's strongest man competitor. His squat was super, super low because he was much skinnier, so to speak. He was only 300 pounds and not 450. And uh, he was much weaker. And then he just got bigger and stronger and ta-da, he's a great squatter. But that's because he had decent ratios to begin with. If you have crappy ratios, you may never become a very good squatter. So what can you do if you are tall and or you just have really short torso compared to long femurs? How can you still either get more out of the squat or get more out of quad training in general? Here's the deal. If you are in the situation, you can play with your foot position and your toe angle such that you can stay as upright as possible in your torso and still squat as deep as you possibly can. Just keep sinking those squats really deep because you have such a huge range of motion out of your squat. 
it will probably be a big key in giving you huge quads. If you find a way to squat that is quad limiting, you could still stay upright, then that's a thing that you can really milk out. And it's going to be a longer time to fill them out than if you're short. Look, short people, we have the edge. Appearance-wise, we take less time to quote unquote fill out. Like you get someone who's like 5'3", like about my height. I'm 5'6", damn it. Someone pointed out accurately that like, you know, everyone who really insists they're 5'6 is like 5'3 in reality. I swear to God, I, I, I've been measured at 5'6 a bunch of times. It was a while ago. Maybe I'm shorter now. But in any case, someone who's like 5'3", when they're 200 pounds lean, oh my God. God, they're like winning the 212 Olympia. They're so jacked. They look like muscle men, right? Or muscle children at that height. And then if you're like 6'9", did you could weigh 300 pounds and people are like, oh man, you're pretty skinny. Are you doing okay? And you're like, fuck, right? So it's just going to take longer to fill out. But once you do fill out, right, uh, you're going to get way bigger quads than the rest of us short people can get. And you're legitimately going to be fucking enormous, which is sweet. Like, you know, short people are never going to be legit enormous. I mean, that guy's really jacked for his height. Right? That sucks to hear. It's a thing. Uh, but when you're tall, like, like, you have the ultimate edge. You just have to work longer and harder for it, right? So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, good thing is you get to eat more food. Uh, you get to have more fun training for a long time, and eventually you get more jacked. So that's kind of a good thing. So I would see it as kind of a little bit of benefit and sort of a challenge accepted kind of situation. If you are tall and you have a really gnarly uh, – torso to femur ratio, what you can do is so, – so basically you've played around with the foot positions and you still can't really squat upright. What you can do is a couple of things. You can take your squats and you can push them later into your program on any particular quad day and you do hacks and leg presses first. Because hacks and leg presses take your torso out of the equation, then you can load them a super, super high amount, get crazy pre-fatigued quads, and then your quads are super limiting factor on squats afterwards and then the squats kill you as well. It's the best of all worlds. So I would do that. I would definitely invest in heeled weightlifting shoes because if you kind of raised heel, you can push your knee forward more and you can have more quad emphasis in the squat. You can try a wider stance. It might hit your adductors a lot, but if you're pretty flexible, a wider stance means that viewed from the side, your, your femur actually appears shorter, so you can stay more upright. That's definitely an option. And you can focus on the technical merits of the squat to be more weightlifter style, less powerlifter style, which means you put the bar nice and high on your back and you sit uh, basically, you sit forward and down or just straight down more than back and down. Back and down, you're going to have to cantilever over your torso. It's going to be more of a limiting factor. So you just want to essentially stay more upright. If you use all of these, you know, you're well on your way to getting a lot of great quad training and still even squatting in most cases, just not as a first exercise, right? Either way, do your best no matter what Good Lord gave you and follow your quad stimulus to fatigue ratio, whichever exercises and techniques give you the best stimulus and the lowest amount of fatigue, including back fatigue from the axial loading. And that's how you're going to know what is best. Less dogma, more intelligence. You're not too tall to squat. So if you're super tall and I ever meet you in real life, you had better be squatting or else. See you next time.